Wasn't that a brilliant performance, Yash? Truly commendable. It is rightly said that art is too important to not share. On this special occasion, we would like to present and share with you a unique and exclusive art exhibition on the life and achievements of Raja Ram Mohan Roy, which has been planned, created, implemented and executed by our very own DP1 students. Born August 14, 1774. Place of birth Radha Nagar Village. Hogli District, Bengal Presidency. Now West Bengal. Indian religious, social, and educational reformer who challenged traditional Hindu culture and indicated lines of progress for Indian society under British rule. He is sometimes called the father of modern India. He was born in British rule Bengal to a prosperous family of the Brahmin class Varna. Little is known of his early life and education, but he seems to have developed unorthodox religious ideas at an early stage. As a youth, he traveled widely outside Bengal and mastered several languages, Sanskrit, Persian, Arabic and English, in addition to his native Bengali and Hindi. He was employed by John Digby, a lower company official who introduced him to Western culture and literature. For the next 10 years, Roy drifted in and out of British East India Company service as Digby's assistant. Roy continued his religious studies throughout that period. In 1803, he composed a tract denouncing what he regarded as India's superstition and its religious divisions, both within Hinduism and between Hinduism and other religions. As a remedy for those ills, he advocated a monotheistic Hinduism in which reason guides the adherent to the absolute originator who is the first principle of all religions. He sought a philosophical basis for his religious beliefs in the Vedas and the Upanishads translating those ancient Sanskrit treatises into Bengali, Hindi and English and writing summaries and treatises on them. The central theme of those texts for Roy was the worship of the Supreme God who is beyond human knowledge and who supports the universe. In appreciation of his translations, the French Societe in 1824 elected him to an honorary membership. In 1815, Roy founded the short-lived Atmiya Sabha to propagate his doctrines of monotheistic Hinduism. He stayed in Christianity and learned Hebrew and Greek in order to read the Old and New Testaments. In 1820, he published the ethical teachings of Christ, excerpted from the four Gospels under the title Precepts of Jesus, the Guide to Peace and Happiness. In 1823, when the British imposed censorship upon the Calcutta Press, Roy, as founder and editor of two of India's earliest weekly newspapers, organized a protest arguing in favor of freedom of speech and religion as natural rights. That protest marked a turning point in Roy's life away from preoccupation with religious polemic and towards social and political action. In his newspapers, treatises and books, Roy tirelessly criticized what he saw as the idolatry and superstition of traditional Hinduism. He denounced the caste system and attacked the custom of Sati. His writings emboldened the British East India Governing Council to act decisively on the matter leading to the prohibition of Sati in 1829. In 1822, Roy founded the Anglo-Hindu school and four years later the Vedanta College in order to teach his Hindu monotheistic doctrines. When the Bengal government proposed a more traditional Sanskrit college in 1823, Roy protested that classical Indian literature would not prepare the youth of Bengal for the demands of modern life. 
He proposed instead a modern Western curriculum of study. Roy also led a protest against the outmoded British Legal and Revenue Administration in India. In August 1828, Roy formed the Brahmo Samaj, Society of Brahma, a Hindu reformist sect that utilized Unitarian and other liberal Christian elements in its beliefs. The Brahmo Samaj was to play an important part later in the century as a Hindu movement of reform. In 1829, Roy journeyed to England as the unofficial representative of the titular King of Delhi. The King of Delhi granted him the title of Raja, though it was unrecognized by the British. Roy was well received in England, especially by Unitarians there and by King William IV. Roy died of a fever while in the care of Unitarian friends at Bristol, where he was buried. Roy's importance in modern Indian history rests partly upon the broad scope of his social vision. and the striking modernity of his thought he was a tireless social reformer yet he also revived interest in the ethical principles of the vedanta school as a counterpoise to the western assault on indian culture in his textbooks and treatises he contributed to the popularization of the bengali language while at the same time he was the first indian to apply to the indian environment the fundamental social and political ideas of the french and Amer This year's Independence Day celebration is indeed unique and special. Not only have our students been supportive by performing for us virtually, but even parents have helped and supported us tremendously. Today, on this special occasion, for the first time, we have a special act by parents. So please sit back and enjoy. Anjali, I need a break. Now that the pandemic is over, let's go on a holiday. It's a fantastic idea. Let's go local this year. Boring. What's so interesting in India? Mm, how about I show you something and then you decide. Okay. Okay. Welcome to India Undiscovered. I'm your host Nisha, and for today's episode, we have few of the most iconic yet undiscovered places from around India for you to explore. I suggest you sit back, relax. and buckle up for a high octane ride of india undiscovered cellular jail in andaman and nicobar islands the cellular jail is a massive octopus like structure that was built by the britishers in the year 1906 the jail was also infamously also called by kala pani or the black waters J because the entire prison was surrounded by the sea and there was no way for 